welcome to Pharmacy International. My name is Natasha. Today I will discuss about some of the jobs and responsibilities of a pharmacist in Canadian pharmacy. So there are some other professions in pharmacy as well. For example, pharmacist, pharmacy technician, as well as pharmacy assistant. Basically, they all are interrelated to each other. The top hierarchy is for the pharmacist or the pharmacy manager, and then there is pharmacy technician, and then there is pharmacy assistant. But in today's video, I will discuss about the roles and responsibilities related to pharmacist only. We'll try to make another videos for the pharmacy technician as well as assistant. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So here are the responsibilities of a registered pharmacist. Obviously, there is need to clear all the examinations. For complete information about the examinations and procedure, you can watch the video on Pharmacy International. So let's say number one and main responsibility is patient care about the therapeutic drug related problem as well as appropriateness of a prescription. So whenever a prescription comes to the pharmacy, the pharmacist have to check whether the drug related problems are there or there is appropriateness of that particular drug for the patient as well as they need to do the patient counseling. So once they are done with therapeutic appropriateness of a prescription, there is patient counseling. That's the major part for the pharmacist. Whenever any prescription, whether it's a new or the refill of a previous prescription, patient counseling is must. In the patient counseling, the pharmacist needs to explain each and every aspect of that particular drug. On top of that, how it is related to their particular disease and how it helps them to manage their diseases. So that's the main important task of every registered pharmacist. Doesn't matter whether they are working in hospital pharmacy or they are working in community pharmacy. Next is recommendation of the therapies as well as resolving DTP. DTP means drug therapy problem. For example, a pregnant woman come to the pharmacy, the doctor by any chance, or they didn't tell to the doctor that yes, I am pregnant and they came with the prescription and now we know that this particular prescription is not good for a pregnant lady. So first of all, we need to find out the background information of a patient. Then we need to find out is there any drug therapy problem if there is, we would recommend patient not to take medication and we will send a fax to the doctor and find out the alternative ways. So that's the another way or another kind of duty for a registered pharmacist. Assessing and recommending the therapies for minor ailments. So nowadays minor ailments prescriptions or prescribing for the minor ailments in great demand, especially in Ontario. Ontario College of Pharmacy have launched so many minor ailments that a registered pharmacist can prescribe nowadays. So that's another major important task for the pharmacist to find out whether the therapy is appropriate for a person for minor ailments. I would try to make another video or a separate video what are the minor ailments which are given by the Ontario College of Pharmacy to the registered pharmacist so that they can prescribe for those certain conditions in certain circumstances. So that's another, another duty for a pharmacist over here. Next is narcotic ordering. So in pharmacies here in Canada, not everyone is eligible for ordering the narcotics. So in order to order the narcotic, every pharmacist have a specific code. Like me also have a specific narcotic code. Whenever I need to order or any, I need to purchase any of the narcotics for the pharmacy, I need to put my narcotic code. That's the main responsibility. And whenever the narcotic orders come to the pharmacy, we need to sign on the prescriptions as well as the narcotic orders that yes, we have received the narcotics from that particular company. So let's say that order gonna come to the pharmacy for narcotic orders. I, if I'm on duty, so I need to say, sign on the paper, I need to document that documentation that yes, I, Natasha, has received the narcotics. So that's the major important task of a pharmacist. Not everyone working in the pharmacy can order the narcotics. Receiving verbal orders for the prescription. So, Pharmacists are also able to take the prescriptions verbal order from the doctors. So many times the pharmacists get a call from the doctors and only the pharmacist can take the verbal orders. In the past, we were not allowed to take some of the uh, verbal orders for narcotic and controlled substances. But nowadays in some provinces, not in all, but in some provinces it's allowed to have some of the verbal orders even for the narcotics as well as controlled substances. Obviously there are conditions apply. So we need to find out Ontario College of Pharmacy, Alberta College of Pharmacy and their rules and regulations in order to take verbal orders for some restrictive, restrictive substances. Next is demonstrating medical devices. So as a healthcare professional, pharmacists are also required to demonstrate about the healthcare 
devices. For example, a person comes with a prescription of any asthma inhaler or COPD inhaler or any of the insulin injections. So as a part of the healthcare professional, being as a pharmacist, we need to explain them how to use the inhaler, how to use the insulin, how we can use the ozampic pens and all. So these are some of the responsibilities a pharmacist needs to do in their day-to-day -day practices. Next is immunizations. Pharmacists are also able to do the immunization. For example, COVID vaccines, influenza vaccines or some of the other vaccines. Obviously, the pharmacists need to do the injection training before going for the immunization. But once you are done with the injection training, you are good to go for the immunization as well. Pharmacists have their expanded scope of practices as well. In the expanded scope of practices, there could be, as I said earlier, provide immunization, improve patient care, renew and extend the prescription for continuity of care. For example, a person on any of the medications, for example, they are on metoprolol or bisoprolol for the high blood pressure or heart rate for several years. Due to any reasons, they couldn't get the doctor's appointment and there is no refill left on their prescription. They are not able to go to the walk-in clinics and there is no emergency available at that moment. So after checking the appropriateness and everything for the patient, sometimes the pharmacist can also renew or extend their medications depending upon the circumstances. Next is adapting. It's one of the main parts of the day-to-day -day practices. So for example, a person comes with a clarithromycin 500 milligram tablets. Everything is okay. Appropriateness of the prescription has been checked. But now patient is saying, I'm not able to swallow the tablets. Are you able to give me the liquid formulation for the same? After checking the appropriateness and finding out if the product is available within the certain strength and if we can give the right amount of doses in the liquid form, pharmacists are allowed to adapt the prescription. Obviously, we need to send the facts to the doctor that yes, we have changed the formulation from one particular tablet form to the liquid doses form, okay? So that's, a, that's some of the another things which pharmacists are doing on their day-to-day -day practices. The basic things which I explained you in this particular video related to pharmacists, they are more related to the pharmacist role in community practice. So in hospital pharmacy, there are different roles. I will try to make another video related to hospital pharmacist roles, but whatever I have explained you, it is most likely related to community pharmacy roles, okay? So these are some of the roles and responsibilities a pharmacist usually do in a community practice role, but these are not a complete list of the roles and responsibilities. Obviously, there are some others as well. For example, education and mentorship. Obviously, the main part of the community pharmacy role, the pharmacist need to explain everything to their staff member, have to do, for example, certain meetings on regular interval of time to explain and to educate their other staff members to their colleagues as well as to their technicians as well as assistants. So these are some of the things which pharmacists usually do on day-to-day -day basis. I will try to make another video regarding the roles and responsibilities for a pharmacy technician as well as pharmacy assistant. Hope you like this video. Please do subscribe my channel and do like this video as well.